and welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick with a brand new haircut. Uh, thankfully, right? <laughs> Mine hopefully later today. <sighs> just, uh, I know, mine was getting super long, so I was like, mine just gets, short. Mine just gets just unmanageable. It's yeah. just not manageable anyway, so. But yours looks pretty. Yeah, but it's, it's like as soon as... If it happens to be one, I only have like six hairs up there. And if one of them's in the wrong direction, it screws up the whole thing. And I got a cowlick in the front. Uh, yeah. Well, the longer it gets, the more the cowlick acts up. Yeah. I know. got a cowlick too, but that's all on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> um, so. Oh, I'm up in arms about everything again. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, it's just everything. And I, I said to Carla, I go, you know, there are a gazillion local Manchester related school things to talk about this week. Um, and then we'll see where we dwell. We always end up going off. We there. always but end up. But I did up. actually make a list because there's so many of them. Because as I started writing them down, I'm like, oh, yeah. And then there's that. Oh, oh yeah. you started with pay raises. So, I forgot about oh, that yeah. from last week. Oh, yeah. Although I did post it and people were so, pretty horrified. Last week, school, I think it was last week. It was this last was week. December 9th. So it must have been December 8th, which was a week ago. Yeah. Right. So last, last Tuesday. Week, right? Last Tuesday, On there Monday, was a school committee meeting. Um, and they voted... Now, keep in mind, I just want you to, like, let's put ourselves in the in the mood. The kids are all at home. Mom and dad are struggling to figure out how to juggle work and being home with the kids who are learning off the computer because we're not in schools. Um, the mayor has clearly said they're projecting a $9 million budget hole in the school budget. Um, also, I'm like, How? Why? Well, because I think there was costs involved in, um, I think there were costs involved in making it so that the kids can work remotely and that pivot. exceeded what we got for CARES Act money. Okay, but then also weren't there a lot of savings because well, the schools were no, closed and there's no electricity no, and no just, water that, and no utilities? There's water, and... but they still have to heat the school, they still have to heat the buildings. and I mean, they still have, that's the problem with our school budget. We have all this fixed overhead that whether there's one student, zero students, a thousand students steam, seem to still um, exist. The number doesn't go down. So enough. a $9 million hole. So let's think that's the picture we're living in. So everyone's been suffering. Everyone's, you know, we're all struggling. We're all in this together. Some of you are essential. Most of us are unessential, but Let's go ahead and vote. The school committee extended um, the contracts, which I don't have a problem with extending the contracts of the superintendent and then the three executive officers or assist, I guess they're assistant superintendent. Uh, so they got a 5% raise. The, the superintendent got 2.1. We'll give him a benefit of the doubt. He got a 2.1% raise, which was brought him up to $177,093 a year. So $178,000. Excluding his very, very nice benefit package. Oh yeah, correct? that's right. This is just this, this is, is just, just salary. Straight up salary. The, the kicker ones, Amy Allen, who's the assistant superintendent, Jennifer Gillis and Chief Oh, those are two Amy Allen and Jennifer Gillis are both deputy or assistant superintendents. Okay. And then Chief Financial Officer Karen DeFrancis. They each got a 5% raise. I knew there was a 5% somewhere. <laughs> bringing their salaries up to $134,134, which was a, bon a raise of $6,387 a year, which is about $123 a week. So for those of you, you know, who don't make $135,000 a year. I don't. Oh, I don't. I mean, like, make $35,000. <laughs> but... They got a raise that was $123 every week. That's 52 weeks out of the year. That's nice, mad money. Um, yes. Yeah. So, in addition, um, I believe there's also a $5,000 add to their one time exit payments at retirement. So, they get that retirement bonus. We just bumped up that retirement bonus another $5,000. Um, and so, would it be fair to say people are voting on giving themselves increases while also putting themselves in a very favorable position should they then yeah, decide well, I mean, to retire? In fairness, retire they don't vote. At these some people stage. didn't vote on these increases, the school committee voted. The people we elect to so the school board. the school board voted to do this with a nine million dollars 
budget hole. In a non-public meeting, I believe. No, right? I don't. This wasn't the part that was in the non-public meeting. So you figure there was that too. So there's three, <laughs> you figure that's three raises at six thousand. That's eighteen. We'll say nineteen there plus another thirty-five. You know, that's a twenty. They spent twenty-five thousand dollars that they didn't have to spend at all. In a time where. Parents are struggling to figure out how to go to work and stay home with their kids while they remotely learn. And can we, we have a $9 million budget hole? Like, this is not when you should be giving out more money. Um, No, or, you know, it, I mean, even just the optics of it, you it's know, just, like, it just doesn't really feel And I realize good. that their job isn't any... So, so I believe they did that, like, literally two days before this uh, yeah, the school board study came out, right? Well, that... The, the, let, well, well, let's, let's oh, talk about some go other bad things. Well, because okay. let's talk about this. So they gave out raises. Then... In, uh, I don't know which day. Now, I don't, I want to try to put my weeks in perspective here. There was another school committee vote. Um, well, that was Sunday, December 13th, so I'm thinking it's in the same meeting. Um, and this is how the, exactly how the article is written. You likely missed it because no television cameras, cameras were present and the cable and audio feed was off. Because Manchester Community Television, as wonderful as they are, they didn't carry the vote because... The coverage of the meeting, which was held remotely, never resumed after the school board returned from non-public session. So we're doing these mo meetings remotely, and the public somehow can watch them remotely or something, or see. I, but then they're not, so you don't even get to see what happened, and there's nowhere else to go back and see it like even on local access because it doesn't exist. Which could be solved, and this is something that Right to Know New Hampshire is actually working on, I believe, is to just say, we should really only have non-public meetings in very, very, should, very isolated yes. incidences. Of course, the New Hampshire Constitution says that our government should be open, open accessible, responsive, and accountable yeah. to the people. So to me, that just means, hey, if you work for the government and you're doing yeah. something, why can't we know? So I, I believe in the same meeting, which is interesting that it didn't end up in that article. Um, <laughs> It could be a different meeting, so don't hold it against me if I've got my weeks off. Um, they voted. Okay, let's get a little backstory first. Back in whenever, the school board approved the teacher's contract. Mm -hmm. And in that teacher's... That was this year, just to yes. say, uh, clarify. So that was this year, once While, the schools were closed. Yes. Sort of, I want to say it was like may It was. It was in the... It like was. it was early at the start of the year. Yep. Uh, or start of all of this. Because I recall actually being like, whoa, that's really cheeky. You guys haven't had a contract for two years. You and closed the schools. Now. No one can meet. You closed the government. You've got into all these remote sessions. And now you're just... Voting right. on so this they contract. voted in this contract, um, which increased the steps because they never really talk about this. But um, union employees contracts, people get cost of living increases, they get merit raises that go to everybody, and then they get step increases. So basically, they get an increase in their pay just because they were there another year, whether they did in addition to everything else. So in the contract. Um, it very clearly said no retroactive step increases. They were, I mean, and everybody in the school board, everybody who was on the, t the school negotiation side said, yeah, it was very clearly spelled out. There is no back, there is no retro, you know, retroactive. The teachers unions, Manchester Education Association, went back to its members and claims that they were just mistaken, but they told them there would be retroactive increases. So they screwed up. So naturally, if the union screws up, the way we should rectify it is you, the taxpayers, pay something extra. Because that's how it works. Sounds reasonable. Right? And in case so, you're confused, that's sarcasm. So <laughs> um, <sighs> under the terms of this memorandum of agreement, teachers who received a step raise effective when the contract was ratified in, on May 5th have until February of 2021 to take a day off with pay without having to use a sick or personal day. The, day. the bonus days must be taken on Wednesdays because that's when the schools would not have had kids in them if we had kids in the school at all. And they are subject to the approval of the, te of the teacher's principal. But the reality is 
we shouldn't have to pay any of that at all. We agreed to a contract that <laughs> already gave is increases. a lot of what's going on. She and knows. the union screwed up and lied, either li blatantly lied or just was stupid and told their members, their union members, something that wasn't the case. And to fix it, instead of saying, well, too bad, that's the contract you agreed to, we, the taxpayers, get to give more concessions yet again. Just saying. All right. Okay. Two. All right. And then we come we to at the, the report. We're at the yet. audit. Okay. So, so this is the study that says that even though enrollment is down by 20% mm -hmm. over the last 10 yep. years, and in high schools, it's down by 30%, yep. Yep. Um, we should uh, just, you know, continue on this. Like, No, you know, the report does not say so, continue. So they say close four schools. Yep. So those schools are uh, Gosler Park, Smith, Wilson, and... Hallsville. Hallsville. Yep. Where Which is, is Hallsville? Hallsville's over in, like, Ward 4, Ward 7. I can see it in my head. It's an old brick school. It's very small. Oh, I think it's Pole Stand stood. No. Pole Stand. No. no. Uh, Wilson is over... It's on Wilson Street. Smith is on Smith Road. Gosler's in Ward 11. And yep, Hallsville's in, like, Ward 4, Ward 7, somewhere over there. So basically, um, so first of all, when they when they looked at this uh, assessment, right? Mm. So they were assessing educational suitability, mm -hmm. the building's conditions, yep. their tech re readiness. Yeah. Not one single school in Manchester got an excellent. Six out of twenty-two managed to get a good, and this poor Holesville that I don't Hallsville know where it is, is just is a mess. Like, well, Holesville's been a mess for as long as I can okay. remember, so it doesn't surprise me. So um, now they're saying to improve the, if they those were, yes. schools to a good rating all in all three of those categories. Yes. So that being the tech, tech, and building, building condition, and, everything. and education is going to cost $92.7 million. Right. If we were right? to do it all, like if we were to write a check. But also, and this shocked me, I can't lie. So there's 158 yeah. million. That's a lot of money. 158 million dollars in deferred mm -hmm. maintenance, yep. life cycle, and capital improvements. Yep. So we're so, not taking care of the buildings. So, according so to would this. it be correct to say if you've got these kinds of deferments, that's people on the school board going, ah, we it's, should really spend the money on fixing this, but, but we're just going to take it and give the, raises right. to people. I mean, or don't get me wrong. Yeah, right, know, right. Like, we like, have where, to have priority. Where are like, the priorities? Yeah. I mean, some of these school buildings. Hallsville, for example, they are old. I mean, they are really old. And I imagine to repair, bring them up to standards would cost. I mean, I could look up here. Just got but, but would it be fair to say if we didn't do these deferments, like if people actually manage things properly, like oh, when something actually, breaks in my house, you fix it. I fix it because one, it's my house, it's yep. my property. You know, there's the short pain or the long pain. So you can like, right. fix it now or have, you know, right. like a leaky roof that causes mold that whatever. Right. So I guess one of my questions just as a like meta question is, why are they allowed to do well because on because this regular is what we do. maintenance the, the one side will scream because you won't fund education enough and the other and then the taxpayers will say well our 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 funding's going up and our our population is declining <laughs> everyone knows and that you're out raises so if you can i mean in a business structure in true business if you don't have money for raises you don't hand out raises if you have to put a new furnace in your business yeah. And it eats into the money that you were going to give in raises. You don't just give out the raises anyway and figure out how you're going to cut your paychecks next week. You, I mean, you can do that. That's not really a good plan. Um, so they want to close these four schools. Hmm. Then part of the additional proposal was that they want to build a brand new school. That doesn't seem smart to me. Um, with the savings that we're going to yeah. accrue Which from closing the four schools right. when we gave the raises. Okay. And um, and then merge Webster and McDo McDo McDonough. McDonough. I know it's Mac a mouthful. Donna. And then um, and then somehow that's magically going to give us nine point six million in savings. <laughs> well, I think the reason is like no, no. Magic. I think so this is like my budget. So where math. where I think the, <laughs> the savings that they talk about comes from is if if you take 
I don't even know how many total schools there were, to be honest. I don't remember. If you take all the schools and you were 22. Okay. If you're able to better maximize, if you take these 22 schools and say, which is the best school and how can we maximize the number of students, take out redistricting, take out all that factor. And then you close some schools and you merge some schools. And they are talking about merging Memorial and MST. Right. Yeah. If you do these things, there is going to be savings because... There wouldn't be as many buildings. Right, right. you're consolidating. And there would it be consolidation of administration, in theory. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, there would be a principal of one school instead of of two schools. So there what should the be. Or we just create just like more <laughs> levels of tiered <laughs> deputies and assistants and assistants right. to the assistants um, of the deputy of the assistants. I mean, I'm gl I was glad to see that there's actually an audit that says the things that are but here's the thing, Tammy. Why we're not going to do any of it? Why can't because and and this sort of segues a little bit into this whole thing about the the public charter schools mm. too, right? Because you know when when this report came out and when when the raises came out, I posted something on social media and it was interesting because really genuinely, I'm about let's open the debate mm. and the conversation to be like sure. We've been doing schooling this way for 200 years. We like our brick buildings. We like to yep. defer our capital yep, yep. investments, like all of that. But it's like, could there be like a totally radical, awesome new way to do this? And certainly in the 90s, when people started to create across the nation these public charter schools, mm -hmm. that in the 90s, so we're talking 30 yep. years ago, people were like, this isn't working. We should try something new. So here we are 30 years later. We're still fighting on the executive council. That money was finally approved. Yes. So that 46 million that we've been talking about on the show for at least the first part will come a year. Way. The first 10 million has now been approved so that money can come in so that it will go to public charter schools. So sure, that's a little bit of a solution, but even the resistance there is there amazing. There well, is because, like mind boggling. So it, when it comes to what you know, we could do to actually improve yeah. educational well, outcomes for children. Even just in the resistance, you can see what the problem is. So you've got these public charter schools that get far less funding from uh, the government than the, the traditional public schools, right? The brick and mortar school, normal brick and mortar school over here which doesn't have any students in it, but that's a whole different discussion. Um, and they managed to do it for far less. They Their cost per student is like a fraction of what the cost per student in the regular schools are. So when you talk about giving them some money so that they can expand, it would improve some schools and it would it would create, allow some new ones to, to come about. The pushback is, well, there's gonna be taking money from the public schools. Well, are also going to be taking the students from the public schools. But the problem lies back to that number. The, 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 the left says we need the public school buildings and the unions and that monstrosity of an expense to stay exactly the same. And we shouldn't change any of it because that's how we've done it and we've made promises. On the parent and the student and the, the taxpayer side, we're saying... If you're going to take my money, I would like to know that it's going to educate children properly as well as can be. Now, the ad we get money from the state. Everybody in the state gets money from the state, thanks to the Claremont decisions years ago. So there's adequacy money that follows that follows the student to the degree that it goes to the school district. It doesn't actually follow the student. Which we would, I, I at least would like to see. I think one of the cool things we could actually grapple with this year in the legislature is make it the money so that the money follows the child. Yep. If we are going to start with the assumption, if then, right? If the goal of schooling is to educate children, yep. and according to the New Hampshire Constitution, we're supposed to cherish education yep. so that kids can participate in their civic duties. That's why we are supposed to send yep. kids to school, so that they can read or write, so that they can read the New Hampshire Constitution, That's right. That's right. so that they can tell when, you know, someone's just become the king. Yes. Um, so that's the reason. So if we actually want kids to learn, 
then we've got to let go of this notion of these old-fashioned, ridiculous well, ideas. It, it, it obviously doesn't work the way it did in 1950. It just doesn't. That I mean, anybody... I with mean, a- even just post-internet, right, guys? Yeah. It's like, um, so, so here's the thing that no one wants to talk about. Is, is school where you go to learn? Or right. is school where you go to plonk your children right while you out, go right. to work, right? And if we are looking at what how society works and like what kind of world we want to build and live in and all of that, then surely now of all time seems like a great time yep. to go, what can we do different? Yep. How can we improve? And so, you know, like, I, I, I so, think we should just it, let the money follow the child. Let I agree. all these little things pop up, little tutoring. I'd probably teach an art right. class to 10 kids I once know a all week sorts if of I people. could. I, I know, I mean, I know many people who have very unique skills that could teach children those skills. Right. And, and if there was some sort of way to do it. Now, and wouldn't that be amazing because you'd be exposing these children to all kinds of different people. So it's not just like we're in this building and we're, you know, Pink Floyd's the wall. Yeah. We don't need no <laughs> education. You know, like it's uh. Well, so the adequacy number for those of you who don't know it cuz I made it, I'm going to have to put this in a Google form cuz I keep losing it. So the average adequacy great grant from the state of New Hampshire, the adequacy payment from the state of New Hampshire to the Manchester School District is about $4600 per student. Oh wow, that's it's, high because yeah. I think the state average is 37. No, that right? is the state average. The oh, really? base the base okay. is $3786.66. Every student the school district gets three thousand seven hundred. Okay. Then, then there's another eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars if that st- if that student it qualifies for free or reduced lunch. Doesn't mean they get a ref- if they qualify. Then, if the student has an IEP, there's another two thousand plus dollars. You know, like it adds up. It all depends on the student, which is kind of how it sh- should be in a way. Yeah. So that money, if that money, imagine if four thousand, five thousand dollars could follow the student. How many other schools would open up that would specialize in the needs of those students. Um, But when you talk about pushback and like why this doesn't happen, also this week, um, the Board of Education unanimously voted to back the Learn Everywhere program. Um, And let's see, this is uh, the Board of Education Chairman Drew Klein. Through, Through Learn Everywhere, students can earn high school credits by demonstrating competencies learned outside the school building. We're thrilled to be able to offer students this opportunity to earn science credits by completing the world-class program at New Hampshire Academy of Science. So basically they're saying you can go to New Hampshire Academy of Science, learn things, and then it will count towards your education because you learned things, education, learning, it's actually the same thing. And that program was something that was introduced twice, I believe, yeah, and, then and, Democrats, and just well, you know, sort of pushed aside. Here, so again, the question everyone back home needs to be asking themselves is what is the goal of schools? Is it for children to learn or is it to give handouts to a special well, interest group? The After the vote, New Hampshire Education Association president said, called the vote insulting to education professionals across New Hampshire. Guess what, people? Here's an idea. You have to decide, is education for the kids or is education for the schools? And here's the thing, and I think this is important because I always feel like I have to disclaim anything when I say something. <laughs> I love teachers. Oh, I I'm love not learning. The teachers. I'm an innate learner, educator. Like I'm, I, that's my jam. I'm into that stuff. But here's the thing: it's not about the system. It's about the outcome. So right. if we want kids to read and write. And, and thrive in the things that they thrive in. Yeah. Not every kid's a science geek. Not every kid is a musician. Not every kid is a mathematician. Then let's let them go where they want. And honestly, I believe, and I do truly believe this, that if we eliminate the red tape and the structure and the system that we've set up, teachers, teachers would are going to be happier. Because you're take- actually going to be able to do and teach like you want to, like have the freedom to actually excel at what you're doing instead right. of also imagine being told being, this is the only imagine way. Imagine being a fourth grade elementary school 
teacher, right? Where right now you have to teach math and English and all this stuff. And you're teaching in a school that specializes in the kids that from first grade are science geeks. Yeah. And you're a science geek. You're teaching fourth graders about like chemistry because that's how yeah. advanced they are. <laughs> my classroom would blow up. For no, sure. my, I, I dropped out of chemistry. <laughs> I couldn't even lie. I was like, yeah, this isn't my goal. This is not my forte. Uh, but um, they would be better. There would be better opportunities for teachers. And so here's the other thing, you know, maybe we can wrap up with this, but there was a letter in today's union leader by uh, Janine Deesh out of Peterborough, oh, right? She was the former yeah. senator. Right. Uh. And she got, you know, she got booted. But, you know, so she was talking about this whole tension between the charter schools and the the, um, the public the charter other schools, public schools. And, and the other public schools and sort of making a case only for the schools she likes, right? And I'm just like, why, why not both? Why can't we just go? Right. And you know how you get both or every three different ways or 10 different ways is you allow the freedom for the child to have the money so that the parents together with the child and together with educators providing services in a free market environment all get to choose what is best for that child. You know what we will have? We will have Choice. kids who can, can read, read and write. write. And kids who are and happier. Who are happier. We'd have better, we'd have happier teachers, we'd have happier, happier students, we'd have happier parents. We'd be having kids coming out of the school, their education, with skills that they could maybe actually learn, use in their life. And so, you know, I don't think people should be as resistant or as scared. And I certainly, I call out to, you know, my my progressives and my democratic brethren, get over it. Like, you know, <laughs> this is 20, almost 2021. Let's see if we can figure out some new way. Clearly this model isn't working anymore. Let's try something new. I agree. It's just, I it, it's boggling that we don't change. It takes year after year after year, same thing. Um, before we wrap up, because we got a couple minutes, um, next week's Christmas already. I don't know how that happens. Next Friday's Christmas. Um, be aware that there are many businesses struggling right now, in particular um, restaurants. I'm gonna just say those in general. Restaurants are struggling to stay open right now. Um, not not just because of the restrictions on how many tables they can have. I think I know restaurants that if they if those tables that they're allowed to have were full, they'd be okay. They'd manage. I think. But what the we're problem doing is, is is that we've horrified and terrified people into doing anything that resembles any normalcy of life. So those people are avoiding everything. So now you've got um, I Keith Murphy made a Facebook post and I'm not going to be able to summarize it, but he used the word um, privilege and the audacity of bureaucrats to make these decisions that are going to directly impact people's ability to learn, earn an income. We're talking people who serve food, cook food, those waitresses and bartenders and all those people, they have families too. They have bills. They That is how they pay their bills and feed their families no, but and the bureaucrats just gonna take everyone have care made care it. of everyone forever but it's me. not it's just you know the money tree is just gonna keep giving but the reality giving. is is there is no extended unemployment but ex, you know at enhanced unemployment benefits those people would go back to getting half of their paycheck on unemployment i don't know about you I, I'm lucky enough that if that my income doesn't matter for our household, but I cannot imagine being a, a parent and you're used to making X amount of money and now because of the government and other bureaucrats putting additional fear into people's minds, um, their businesses are failing. And so get out there, go Support to restaurants. Support a local business. We're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> we'll see Thanks, you next guys. week. See you next Bye. week. Bye.